Hello everyone, good evening, welcome to the Play vs. High School Championship where we're bringing you the grand finals of the BC School, uh, um, both the University Hill Secondary School Hawks Black and the Lambrick Park Lions going head to head in the grand finals here of their League of Legends tournament. I am going to be the man on the mic, Oski Champ, and next to me is the kid, the king, Suplex, bringing his own mix inside <laughs> the building. How you doing, man? We're doing pretty good now. It's been a great day so far of games, and I can't wait to keep it going. It has been non-stop action here on Play Versus, and we only have more cooking up. League of Legends is up next for your favorite, one of your favorite games of all time. Aussie Champ, tell me more about what we might see in this kind of matchup. I mean, League of Legends is a kind of game where there's so much adaptation you can see, there's so much creativity, there's so much creativity in the builds you can make, in the builds you can overall have as a team. I mean, are you excited, my man? Yeah, there's nothing more exciting to me than getting to see Amazing League of Legends and then getting to see it at this level. You know, we're getting to see the best and brightest of the younger side of things. You know, these are our up and coming talents in NA, uh, the most the integral part of the NA experience, you know what I'm saying? Like this is the backbone of what fuels our pro scene, what fuels uh, the future opportunities that are gonna open up through esports. So I'm just so excited to get to see what these young people are bringing to the table. Uh, also uh, shout out to the mentors and all the amazing people that are part of these esports programs that are just doing all the amazing work every day uh, that not everybody gets to see it's not you know the players getting to click the buttons but yeah. uh, there's so much behind the scenes for every person that you see on stage there's got to be 20 25 people that have put their hands on this project so i'm just so uh grateful for everybody that's been a part of getting us to this grand finals because now we're going to get to bring it home and looks like things are already getting started off real oh, yeah. smooth here we are cooking already in the picks and bands you can see already darius is off the table yeah, no way. Dunk Master, out of here. <laughs> a lot of DPS. great bands, you know, across the board there. We could talk about that, but we're already into the picks. And um, looking at these picks, the left side of things, I believe that is the Hawks Black. Mm. have already picked in some amazing AOE uh, team fight uh, that is just going to be so devastating if they're able to execute it flawlessly. That Amumu ultimate... Uh, with a Hecarim and Misfortune ultimate on top of it, it's literally uh, the most point and click uh, deletion of a team that you can pull <laughs> off. So really nice to see them come off with that. But there's a great response pick coming out from the Lions here. They have a lot of peel back, a lot of you know ways to nullify the opportunities that the Hawks Blacks will be looking for. So mm. I'm actually very uh, happy to see this chess match already go in very even nobody's just getting that insane edge from the picks and bit it's cool that we had to see so much an immediate like like you said an immediate chess game going on in just a picks and band screen now already like you mentioned earlier with the dps on the side of hoss black what's the synergy like with those three yeah i mean like i said so easy point and click amumu is gonna find the back line or hecarim can start to find the back line they both are very high mobility engaged amumu a little bit uh, less mobile than the hecarim who's gonna be just literally stampeding across the battlefield mm. but they're gonna be able to really just access the back line and then keep everybody locked down hecarim's ultimate fears people makes them run around and not really be able to act and then amumu can just stun a huge circle around himself uh, on top of that, Misfortune has that ultimate that is just a bullet time. If continuously layers a massive cone of bullets, as well as her E skill that just keeps people slowed and con uh, confined inside of its radius as well. So there's just so much that they have. Pantheon, another great lockdown champion. And then Mordekaiser right now is the most winningest champion on the Rift. In this patch, he has had the most wins per games picked. At, sitting at, I believe, 53%. Uh, so really solid picks there from the wolves black and in response as real and kennen just an insane kite back that is gonna really uh, allow for them to have answers to whatever the hawks black bring to the table at this point it's gonna be whoever can get into that mid game comfortably farmed up with the items on the right people and not make as many mistakes to get mm. to that point that's gonna be able to really start to find an edge now on the side of lions we see huge amount of counterplay going into play and to try and counter the amount of DPS and lockdown and overall, like pure ganking ability that Hawks Black are going to have, what tools do the Lions have to truly counter that? 
Yeah, I mean, the Lions have so many tools to counter that. The Galio ultimate is going to allow for them to basically um, choose one person that gets targeted by the... Um, by the Hawks Black, they're going to be able to give them increased armor, magic resistance, a massive amount of uh, shielding, and then Galio is going to triumphantly smash down onto wherever that person is, <laughs> knock up everybody that's kind of dove onto that space, and then from there, continue just to disrupt and disjoint anything that they want to bring out. Kennen has an ultimate that's a massive uh, AOE electric storm around him mm. he can stun people that get inside of it lulu can add shields and um, also increase somebody's health and uh, really just make them that much more difficult to kill so it's a lot of great responses ezreal as well is the most mobile ad carry he has a skill called arcane shift that's his e skill he can mm. really just reposition well in a fight he can get a lot of added attack speed from hitting his mystic shots and um, continuing to be accurate with that skill is very rewarding for him. Uh, and also, the more accurate he is with those mystic shots allow him to have his ultimate up that much more often. So um, there's just all around some really great checks and balances that we're seeing across this uh, draft phase. I would not be um, you know, able to say who can bring this home from picks and bands. It's really just uh, open to whoever executes most uh, efficiently. I'm loving the sound of the matchup so far then, because at this point, it's really going to become a game of, okay, can the Lions really be able to defend themselves and not get caught in a group? Or are the Hawks going to be able to actually start hoarding up this, uh, I almost want to call it like a sheep herd. Or like they're trying to just round them up, get one big stun, one big misfortune pop, and then boom, they're gone. Yeah, exactly. If the Hawks are able to activate and really get their win condition off and mm. the lions are, are slow to respond they're not able to bring those reinforcements uh, to the table in time it's going to be the hawks blacks day to shine hecarim is going to be able to eat up that ezreal who only gets one or two chances to reposition with the arcane shift and the flash if amumu forces ezreal to reposition early and then Hecarim's there to follow up quickly. It could spell early death for the Ezreal. Mordekaiser as well. We saw him in the last championships that we had a chance to look into mm. um, in Colorado State, I believe, where we got getting to watch. Mordekaiser can literally just yank anybody that he wants into the underworld, make <laughs> their lives so difficult. He can take the jungler away from objectives, which is his primary focus around a lot of these team fights that get forced in. It's really just a champion that you have to be so respectful of. Kennen has a great time harassing him, though, in the lane, though. Gonna can have a good time just being able to poke him down, make every CS that he wants to get difficult to fight for. Now, you mentioned Mordekaiser being such an integral part of anti-jungling. What makes Mordekaiser the absolute threat that he really is? Because you mentioned the pulling them down to the underworld. Does that reposition the enemy? Oh, it, it takes him completely off the field. He literally Ooh. takes them down underneath the rift. They are no longer able to aid their team. Their team cannot aid them. And when he brings them down there, he shreds their armor and their magic resistance. After he's, uh, if he's able to defeat them with his ultimate and they're underneath there, he comes up to the overworld with all of their stats stolen, essentially. No. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> You know, this man is an absolute threat, and that's why he sits there with that, I believe, 53.37 win rate. Uh, if he gets out of control, there's no stopping him. Mm. I can imagine that kind of build being not only not only completely game-changing, but a full shutdown option for a certain amount of counterplay that Lions might try and employ here. Like you mentioned, the amount of DPS on the side of Hawks Black is unprecedented, but Lions are going to have to play nearly perfect defense and a really calculated offense to make sure they don't get caught off guard, stunned, and ruined for just trying to play the game. Yeah, I haven't really gotten a chance to speak on that Udyr, though. He did get a little bit of uh, attention because the character was absolutely out of control. But the mm. Lions have this pick of the Udyr, who is such an insanely quick jungler. We saw the Shivana last week do some quick jungling, which made her start to scale out of control. Udyr is in the exact same boat. He's notorious for being able to just take his entire jungle, head over to your side, take anything that you've left since he's seen you on whatever side of the map that you've shown on, and then you're left uh, with this massive uh, 
bear stance, phoenix stance, turtle stance, tiger stance, and demon that can just maul <laughs> down your team. So it's going to be exciting. It's going to be explosive. And we're in the mix right now. Hawks Black versus the Lions. Try to jump in there. And the entirety of Hawks Black going bot lane? Yeah, that's a good call out, just in case, you know, the bot lane of the Lions choose to make an aggressive path. Is Ezreal looking a little bit yummy for the team as they Ooh. will not be seen as they head into this brush? Here we go now. Oh, very unfortunate for the Ezreal. He's trapped in that dragon pit, but not going to be seen for the time being. They're just going to continue to advance, <gasps> and the scouting has been done by Ezreal, though. He sees this. What will be the response for the Lions since they know all five are inside of this brush? That vision is so huge. They don't see oh, him yet, no, but there's the catch! He still walks up! <laughs> Unfortunate for relief there. He's feeling so sad to know that there was actually five there. Maybe mm. they thought there was only two or three that jumped into that brush. Not right. enough information. No brush preceded his his advance to that brush. He started with the red war, with the red sweeper. Had no access to any vision and was punished for it. That's a big lead to start things off with this misfortune here. Kaju feeling great about that invade. And as we just saw, ganks are going to be an incredibly important interaction for both these teams. That's like five off to through bot lane into the jungle to get one pick off the bat. That's just rat activity 101. But as, we, as the game progresses, we're going to see a lot more um, not only strategic ganks, but as well as counter ganking, counter juggling. This could be something that not only will develop into a pickoff game, but also the kind of game where stealth will be incredibly important. That vision game will come into play even more so. Well, see, speaking of counter jungling and counter vision, there is an Udyr inside of the Hecarim blue side jungle. Right now, Hecarim will be walking up towards this brush, but oh, great job by Relief there to be able to steal that buff away in the face Ooh. of Broken. And Ashley's going to hunt down this horse. Going to be a quick response king coming in from Shanking. Will he be able to get there in time? Nice collapse there on the Udyr. Oh, and big there's gang. the Pantheon as well. Will he be able to flash up? No need. There's not going to be the damage to follow it up, but Broken might have the damage. Broken will have the mm. damage and will reap exactly what he needed there great job bringing out that scythe when it mattered most and broken just having a heyday got the early invade on the blue buff got the bot lane ahead with that and then is able to take both buffs away from relief there even though was not able to secure his own blue buff was able to just get the massive bounty gold 300 on the head of relief looking good so far the fights have started to smooth out now everyone's in their positions no more surprise plays for a minute now. Yeah, you definitely want to see the pace slow down if you are a friend and a fan of the Lions right now. They are not making any headway with these uh, little skirmishes and things like that that are coming about. They got to stop being so aggressive and just lean on the strength, clearing out that jungle and then using that Udyr to possibly counter gank or using that Udyr to push out some lanes for the time being because... Uh, he can literally solo the entire jungle. He can get dragons by himself. He can start to get baby Baron by himself when the Rift Hero does spawn. So, do want to see this Udyr start to just lean into that strength as opposed to going for these early aggressive plays without vision. Yeah, I mean, we're just controlling space at this point. Bottom lane getting a little bit too active though. Three on the side of Lions already getting down there. Looking to hold control. Not too aggressive, but we're trying to make sure we have that dominant role in holding down that space. You can tell they're going to fight for that space, and the Hawks Black might be trying to reinforce, but for now, just playing it slow, keeping their eyes open. Not eyes open. wide on the prize. Some pings going down, a little bit of clearing and relief coming out from relief. Mm. Now going to hover around this dragon that will be spawning in about a minute here. You also see Broken down here for that reason. He's going to go up, clear these wolves very quickly, and then no doubt be downtown for this dragon that it looks like the Udyr wants to start on, but only level 3. Getting a great angle here on this gank for um, Ditto, though. Rocky F. Bear. Flash to come out from Ditto and the flash to follow, but not oh, enough what damage. Oh, got to follow all the way through. Huge escape right there. God dang really 
kissing the angel of death there, but making out like a bandit in the night. Hawks Black, two kills up, and now a thousand and five hundred gold as well. Mm. Kaju uh, as well, just starting to see this massive CS lead that is going to come out from this misfortune. Ezreal, whoo, a very passive laner, and this fortune will be able to just continuously push waves under turret. And that's why we had to see the Udyr come down earlier. But speaking of the Udyr, Udyr's headed up as well as Rocky Affair. Great flash and stun, but maybe a little bit too preemptive. The team not really on the same page. Communication is not go. that go, not that green light. <laughs> they had to hit a little bit there trying to gank him, and that leads to the survival of the top lane there, the Mordekaiser for Hawks Black. And over time, I don't think we really prefaced it too much. This is, again, a two out of three. Nothing too crazy now. And uh, as we move through, we will see some adjustments from game yeah, one to game two. Definitely can but... see some jitters coming out from the lines. They're trying to be big. They're trying to make big plays. They're trying to go for the, you know, the clip. You know, mm. trying to make, you know, I want everybody to see what I did. But sometimes it's about that slow and steady winning the race. Allow your, allow your enemy to start to sweat that they haven't made any plays. Yeah. Before you start to stick your neck out and lose advantages uh, so early in the game, especially against a composition that we theorized on early is very easy to pull off the hawks black don't have many things that they have to do to make the lion's day difficult in a team fight and with the gold lead that they are now already able to have here in seven minutes it's gonna just make it that much easier yeah we see another battle going on in the bot lane trying to control that jungle it's clearing up more and more building up that eco but the gap seems to be only widening as time goes on. Hawk Black now 1.6k over 1.7. And that initial kill may have been a huge spark to allow their economy to start blowing up and gaining that control. That initial fear factor of, okay, I can't be out of position. I need to stick with a teammate. I need to play safe. Lions might have been tamed just a little bit here. Infernal Drake getting nice, uh, nice and devoured by the Lions, though. I love to see it. This Udyr, like I said, is so oppressive around objectives he can he can just get every single one right off the timer and if you are not setting up with your team if that hecarim is not already visioned up and team rotated down waves pushed out they're not going to be able to grab these dragons like that so uh going to be so vital Ooh. for this udyr to continue to do that rocky affair in a little bit of a pickle here but going to be able to do the little waltz do a little dance and get out with his head held high some Big harassment though coming out from Ditto. Yeah, not too much action going on yet, but you can see how the players are trying to try and trade. See how their damage output's going. Try to compare their builds. Rocky F Bear. Woohoo! Yeah, it's unfortunate for Ditto that he has to trade there because this Udyr will start to get a little bit out of control with now that kill and the wave that is able to push out Dark Ocean. Would like to see him side to sidestep those massive ease from Shen King there. The side hitbox is going to be definitely a lot more narrow than trying to walk back away from it. But That's doing a great cool. job thus far, keeping up what he can. A really great Mordekaiser though here in the top line. We're seeing this CS lead already 25 in the favor of the Mordekaiser. And that's only going to get more and more wide as time goes on. Items a lot easier to grab for this Mordekaiser. Hasn't even backed yet from the lane. Just still sitting on the Doran shield and the cannon sorcerer's shoes in tow, but not having a great time with him. Mm. Now you can see just how much the differential is not getting too, too huge at this point in time. We're still pretty early in the game, but we need to start making some differing and now also some actual risky plays. I mean, at this point in time, you can't just keep sitting there, Lions, and reeling from that first initial pick. It's time to make moves. Well, I definitely want to see this uh, MF Kaju go for the Immortal Shield Bow here to try to make sure that Dark Ocean cannot pop her on this cannon. Mm. If he's able to Electric Maelstrom towards the back line and really lock down the misfortune, she's not going to be able to do anything. And that's going to be unfortunate because of the amount of resources that are already poured into her. 95 CS, a one kill, huge gold lead starting to mount up. So uh, if they're able to shut down this MF and single her out in this first fight, that whichever fight they choose to actually take here by the Lions, uh, MF has to be sure to be alive.
Mm. It's really impressive already. Like, 95 cube score, just 10 minutes in. And that seems a little above average in my eyes, at least. Yeah, like, I mean, the, the pros, they aim for, like, that 10 CS per minute. But you can mm. see yourself getting even above that uh, when you're really focused and really uh, able to get some extra resources from the jungle on spawn. But uh, the Udyr is doing a great job of clearing. Hecarim's also doing a great job of clearing. So she's not even able to access those. That's all from the lane. And uh, you see the response from Hongo uh, sitting at 82 in a very, you know, eruptive lane that MF can anytime just choose to engage and make things go crazy. Ditto having to try oh, to yeah. do something crazy across the wall there. But I said this Udyr was getting big. And boy, is this Udyr getting big. Ravaging through the mid lane, getting the CS, pushing things out, and freeing up this Galio now. Rocky F Bear is going to be able to go wherever they want. Mm, real life simply hunting right now. And Lions, this is your chance, yo. You've got the pick. Like we mentioned earlier, the ganks in this, in this kind of matchup are going to be so important. And if you can't capitalize on this one pick, Wild Ditto's down. When are you going to? Well, both these mid laners struggling to find some CS. They are definitely starting to fall behind the curve here as things go forward but Sentry getting engaged on there Woo! having to use everything in the kit and caboodle and makes it out by the skin of their teeth great job quick response from Sentry Hong gonna farm underneath the tower here in real life nearby real life sneaking around the bush trying to Ooh. avoid vision not 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 David <laughs> gonna put some pink ward vision some permanence down to get some tabs on where this Udyr may be. Rocky F Bear again, like you mentioned, like the mid laners are struggling a little bit to catch up to these bottom Dangerous. laners. They're building up! They're fighting! Sentry's down for the count. Kaju is out here, mopping up health bars. Top lane also getting aggressive. The trades are coming in clutch now. Oh yeah, this is becoming a very explosive mid game here. And speaking of exploding, look at the health bar on Ditto. He wishes he could have transformed into somebody else there and chose their health bar instead of his because his is at zero. Mm. No chance of coming back. No chance. Hong, though, on the other side of things, taking a lot of abuse. Kaju with a great follow over the wall, though, gonna lock down everyone, and the Cloud Drake will be the prize of the Hawks Black. Exactly what they want to get onto this heck rim. Gets a bit of movement speed buff. Looking good as we oh, I thought, oh, I'm through. sorry. I thought I thought that they didn't choose to take this Cloud Drake, but they actually just walked away. No, it's chilling. That's good chilling. Gonna choose that for another time or just choose to keep these waves pushed out. Maybe let the other team get baited in. More guys are getting teamed up on a little bit here. The Sentry's still holding on the bot lane. Again, nothing too committal, but that turret's gonna go on slowly. Health bar's getting chunked up by not 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 not, not, not David <laughs> and Kaju. Yeah, Kaju is becoming a very unstoppable force there in the bot lane <laughs> now. Fully farmed up. The CS is right. The turret platings are farmed. Shen King going underneath it all to try to get real life nullified from this fight and taken Ooh. out does end up doing that and then on the other side of things dark ocean is cleaned up by the rest of the team great collapse there in the top river but as that happens hong and Sentry oh no the bottom lane their little bit of gold but the turret plating falling at the most unfortunate time they're not going to be able to get any of that gold that is inside of that objective and for the time being hong just gonna have to push out this wave and head out dang i mean been committed a little bit sooner maybe they could have had a chance but my hawks black just truly did not give them a chance yeah hawks black they are out here doing the thing they are really making this difficult for the lions pushing exactly when they need to and then letting off the gas when it's even more advantageous you see they're okay with letting the bot lane get pushed out right at the turret plating are falling just to make it that much less worth it for the lions there Hawks Black playing a game of um, a lot of get, get, but giving nothing in return. And then on the other side of things, removing the ways that the Lions can come back. Uh, that's why we're seeing that gold lead balloon now. Extra 2,000 gold. They're up 4,000 here Oof. in 15 minutes. 
And that's gonna start to hit. That wallet starts to smack. You feel it when you walk into a fight. Like, yeah. ouch. Why are you hurt me so hard and I don't get to touch you? There is too much gold in there. Do not hit me with that. It's a good yeah. putting rocks in a sock. You can't do that. All those gold <laughs> equal up to items when the shop has occurred. And man, there has been a lot of shopping going on by the Hawks Black. Yeah, you can see it. The creep score differential is absolutely nuts at this point. Get to see it happening now. Ooh, couple of hawks diving in, looking for some prey. Double kill immediately. Kaju is out here and yeah, broken. I... Is cleaning up lions right now. It's that point. It's that click, and it's the delete that we talked about in the picks and bands. Hawk Black pressing go and getting paid there in the jungle. Really clean stuff. They left the dragon, like I said, for pickings later. They yeah. didn't even need it then, and now they're gonna get that Cloud Drake onto the Hecarim, who not only gets to increase his movement speed out of combat, that just gives him that much more AD as well, because Hecarim is a unit, a character that gets increased attack damage with his movement speed so he's going to be able to get double dip kind of on those nice peel back there on the engage from broken as galio came in rocky f bear now no ultimate and they're not going to want to reach out too far here because they could get re-engaged on really unfortunately for them that cannon in the top lane as well is getting abused somebody's got to go help him yeah at this point in time it just becomes a matter of having to counter gank for the lions almost every interaction and we don't have everybody ready to go we don't have everybody on the same page you need to communicate to the best of your ability to really try and at least get a foothold against the hawks right now well, we broken. are here at minute 17 being crossed and 6,000 gold extra in the pocket of the hawks black they are going to now be able to mobilize as a unit and try to delete people off of the map but if the response comes out great from the lines if we see an overextension of the hawks black getting a little bit too greedy or underestimating the explosive power that the lions actually do have it could prove a great comeback condition for the lions but as of this point we have not seen the hawks black make many unforced errors and Oh no, there is a chase oh, down Mordekaiser here. Mordekaiser going in. Mordekaiser, oh. that is so sad to see, man. You know what? That's, that's somebody's son. Like squishing a bug that looks so brutal. Oh <laughs> man. Oh, great job by Hong though. Holy. Going to pick Ditto deleted in the one versus one in the bot lane. And as we speak about one versus one, there's none of that going on. A whole team there to try to lead. What is what is uh, getting out of they control? Know. Mordekaiser here. He is just queuing everybody left and right, isolating the team and taking names. Three people off the map by the hands of Shane King here, going crazy. Top diff. No excuse. No excuse for that kind of play. At this point in time, it is terrifying to even think about what is the right, correct, like actual decision. But at this point, that yeah, top lane is going to go down. Sooner than rather than later, the Mordekaiser creating more and more space for Hawks, and it's just closing in. You can see the curtains begin to close. Look at the economy difference. Look at the kill difference. Look at the creep score difference. This could be the end coming up soon, but we don't know yet. The Lions still have that bite in them. Yeah, this is a big, big obstacle for the Lions to try to overcome, but that's exactly what you get to Grand Finals for. Mm. You want to see the big power up you want to see exactly what grand finals has to offer and then rise to that occasion that's what makes the best narrative that's what makes the best story it's not fun if you just got to go in there and it was just another day in the office but when nah. it's down to the final margins game three situation both inhibitors exposed both yeah. nexuses exposed that's what you're <laughs> looking for maybe Tensions it was a stop high. game one but you can get something out of it and get into game two and really bring something totally different to the table thinking that the hawks black have them downloaded the lions could totally schmix it up and bring it to a whole nother world 100 percent. i mean we see some good jungle control right now from the hawks and again it just takes one good gank and the entire tables could be flipped once again lions starting to congregate in the upper jungle we'll have to see if we can get a nice counterplay going on but again as well the hawks are trying to take down this dragon coming up soon Oh, now they're rushing the Baron on spawn, 20-minute Baron. And this is exactly the overreach or the mistake 
that the Lions were looking for to get their comeback opportunity. Looking for Dark Ocean to have a path into this fight. Right now, he's over the wall. He wouldn't even be able to get into the oh, back line no. with the Slicing Maelstrom. So, yeah, that is just a little bit of harass to push them off the objective for the time being. But that might be the goal sign there. Not, not, not. David taking a lot of harass there in all of the stats. Meeting. Shane King with the big shutdown in tow. Will they be able to nab it off of him? Raid boss, focus down. Hey, wait, so wrong to go. And Kazu <laughs> is in the perfect position to rain down with the bullet time. Oh, it's so unfortunate for the Lions. They were so close, but they played too close with the fire. Shen King was able to tank it all. And just like that, it is going to be the Hawks Black taking this Baron as their prize and taking the Nexus to follow. No doubt. What a huge win on that fight. That was ridiculous. How did Mordecai just survive? You saw his health bar stick at a third for a good 20 seconds. I can't believe what a counter gank that was to the side of Hawks. You just can't match that kind of play without this kind of experience. You can tell they're ready for the amount of options that Lions had, and at this point, I can't imagine their amount of confidence is radiating from the team right now. That top laner did exactly what he needed to do. He mm. tanked so much damage. Everything. Made everyone expend their skills, their time, their energy, their resources. And just like that, the Hawks Black repositioned, they remobilized, and they destroyed that team fight. And like we said, it's no doubt going to be the game, uh, the, the straw that breaks the camel's back here. They're going to be able to pick up this mountain drake choose whatever lane they want to go down and make it their own because they have amassed a 10,000 gold lead here in 20 minutes Ooh. and with the amount of buff that the baron gives and the dragons that they have there's even more gold hidden that we can't even see in that yeah. number <laughs> it's absolutely incredible just how much they've snowballed this into potential w here the lions have a lot to absorb from this match the amount of knowledge you've gained and the amount of experience you have in this kind of team is really valuable when it comes to game two when you can just analyze how they like to gank where they like to be the vision game battle this is something that you don't get zero value from the first game is almost always the most important yeah, they chose a very easy to execute composition at the end of the day and the lions while they did have a great response to it it was just that a response they weren't going to ever get to be in the driver's seat here on this matchup unless the very aggressive plays that real life went for early game paid off and they were able to set this Hecarim back uh, about 10 oh, no. minutes in the game, but uh, we're just gonna get to see a huge collapse here. Flash followed by Kaju keeps it going. Real life tries to get onto the misfortune, but she, no, this year, she heads out. She is able to get a double kill in response. Sentry soloed out by the top laner, Mordekaiser, just playing with his food for the time being. But that is the final blow, and that is going to be another nail in the coffin that is the Lions here in this game one. Yeah, up to a 12k difference at this point. It's looking terrifying. But again, like we mentioned earlier, like this game one is so important for analyzing and for learning. Lions yes. are gonna have an even better answer. Like like you said, it was an answer, not a full solution. But with this knowledge that they have now, they could have a winning formula coming up next. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, they. They could say, okay, we play too responsive here. Let's pick what we know we can win lane and win game with. Mm. And then Hawks Black haven't had to deal with that yet. They, they they got to play with, you know, the Lions playing a little bit more on the back foot with the picks. They also see Hawks Black with that first pick. So just being on that blue side allows for you to be so much more aggressive with how you do things. It's kind of like choosing white in chess. Yeah. Know? And where the Lions uh, chose black, they could also choose white in response. You know, they don't have totally. to go with the comp that's trying to, okay, we know the Hecarim wants to do this, so let's catch him here. We know that the Mordekaiser wants to do this, so let's pick this because we know this does good against Mordekaiser. No, just pick what Dark Ocean is best at. Pick what Real Life loves to play. Pick what Rocky knows he's going to win lane with and not have to have a, you know, a situation where this Pantheon can just jump on his face all day and he has to play turtley, you know? Hong on one of the most passive laners on this Ezreal. He is a great character and does an amazing job when he's allotted that space, but when everybody else is already responsive, who is really going to be that insane threat? 
who is really going to be that, you know, we have to respond to this guy right now or else we're going to lose the game and force their hand. There wasn't yeah. anybody that was drafted really by the Lions. When it comes to win conditions, you can tell that the Hawks really had a very clear objective in mind. And when it comes down to it, like you said, like the Lions had an answer, not a full on formula for that win condition Ooh. that would allow them to fully take control like brought here. down to the depths getting soloed out here by the Kaiser ditto going to get the final hit on that kill there's going to be broken to the back line soloing out dark ocean not going to be able to even use the slicing maelstrom in a threatening manner at all and in this full retreat mode now for the lions which lane will be down the hawk site looks like mid lane the easiest one for the time being it's already got an inhibitor down super minions already flooding the base this is looking incredible so far. Once again, another rush. Just trying to create that space. Get into the enemy nexus. But they're playing it slow. You can see how the Hawks are not trying to overcommit on just one big push. They want to see if they can actually just try and close it out slow and steady. But we're waiting for that next bit of the replay. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I was worried for a second we had that bug. <laughs> one more time. We're cut no, out we, early. We will get to see how this plays out. It might. Mm be sooner than the lions would hope for but it looks like a dragon will spawn in about a minute will that be the point of contention or will the hawks black find an opening sooner it's imagine. so crazy to see that there are four kills onto this pantheon everybody else relatively deathless mm. across the board here another stray death by not 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 david from that great turn yeah, it's crazy how little the bot they've suffered uh, any kind of attack. The Hawks have been nearly flawless. It's oh, terrifying. this is the dragon. It's up. Ooh. It's half down. It's going down, and it's the crown yeah. that the Hawks Blacks are looking for here in town. They're going to be now parading to the mid lane right behind the super minions. Mordecai's are looking, threatening as ever, just going straight for the bacon, but broken, going even deeper behind enemy lines. Going to be a single out focus of Rocky F there by Shen King. Will he be able to kill this? Here we Galio? go. He will be able to get godlike on the map. Yeah, this is about to be it. This push looks like it could be the real seal of the deal. Ooh, really just cool melting stuff through. by Ditto. Hong just going way too far forward there and getting pointed and clicked on by Ditto there. Pantheon so good at what he does, and that is win in this instance here. That is game one for oh, the yeah. Hawks Black, and they're doing it in style, trying to get some extra kills <laughs> on the way out, but 26 to 5. An insane gold lead. That is about 18,000 gold ahead there in Wow, that is a statement of a first game if I've ever seen it. Seriously. Great stuff by the Hawks Black. That was ridiculous. I mean, I don't think I've seen a serious steamroll like that in a long time. I mean, the Lions did a really great job at really trying to counterplay and really think about their options. But when it comes down to it, if you fall behind against a team like that, you're done. You're done. Yeah, That's it. Yeah, yeah. They chose a very easy to execute comp, you know, at the end of the day, University Hill, they were just able to stand on their hill and do what they needed to do. And wow, that was a really, like I said, statement first game. I would love to see the Lions come back with a great response in game two to really make uh, the Hawks think about what they did and what, what, what that 21 minute victory felt like. True. No, I mean, I do believe there was a really good play at the beginning that sparked all of this again we saw hawks just waltz in through bot lane and just get that first pick and it Man, all started from there the hesitation so yeah. the fear like it just locked in that you guys are gonna stay put and we're gonna buff ourselves up and our win condition is gonna be much better than yours so i'm sorry if you lose this fight initially it's over and it was that was it that was the spark right that ignited that whole bonfire of just steamrolling right through so lions now on this time we obviously know what not to do. <laughs> That's right. The ball is in your courts, Lions. Mm. And I believe for the time being, while we get this next lobby ready up, we're going to jump to a short break. So go refill your drinks, grab yourself a snack, and we'll see you guys on the other side for game two. You better, yo.
Welcome back, y'all. Once again, we are heading into game two of the Play vs. Fall 2022 High School Championship featuring League of Legends here with the BC School Sports. Once again, this is game two of Hawks vs. Lions. Osti, what do you think about the first game, man? That was pretty brutal. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it, gonna keep it real. I think that the word we used in uh, our little chat in between the mm. games right there was clinical. Clinical. And that was just some mm. great stuff that we saw come out from these young talents. Um, you know, it's really funny to see that, you know, no matter what happens in League of Legends, through the times and the trials and the tribulations, a jungler is just so important as you know a role on the map is just so integral to the success of a team you know uh, of course the mid laners the flashy you know the faker the person that sells yeah. the tickets in a way <laughs> but at the end of the day that jungler is just so important and we saw broken there get to do so much work on the hacker room uh, just being able to absorb the early pressure that real life was trying to come out with and then find his own opportunities and engage his other lanes uh, that were already just set into motion with the kind yeah. of the way that he's, he set things up. So Broken, really my player of the game last game on the Hecarim, uh, even though we saw some massive uh, stuff come out from the top laner and the yeah. AD carry, <laughs> it was all enabled by the great stuff that we saw on the Hecarim. Yeah, I, I did want to shout out the Mordekaiser player as well. Like that was absolutely ridiculous. In every team fight, he did not go down. You could not yeah. kill him. And Ditto, I mean, Ditto had all the deaths on the team, but that's because mm. Ditto was doing exactly what needs to be done on the Pantheon, was able to lock down key targets, was able to get underneath their skin and really yeah. make them uh, their positioning get called out uh, in ways that were just detrimental to how they could play the game. And uh, it was just great stuff all around that we saw come out from the Hawks. Like I said, as we left game one, I'd love to see the Lions come out with something here to really shake things up and to really make the Hawks feel like they're on the back foot or have to draft up some answers. Yeah, the Hawks did a really amazing job at really locking down the Lions' options and making them feel the initial fear of what do we really do? Where can we be? And the vision game might have been won by the side of Hawks. And at this point in time, it, Lions have to not only create a real win condition for themselves this time to truly counter the Hawks aggression but also a real adaptation to how they like to engage. The Hawks were so ready for every team fight, every time the Lions had such a hard time really trying to engage properly so maybe playing a more assassin focused build is more important but I'm not really sure what the answer would be. Do you, can you think of like I'm not as familiar with the builds of course and synergies in the League of Legends so what would be a good answer for a team like we just saw from Hawks? Well, it starts off with the bands, and I mean, they took the uh, misfortune away from Kaju, but that's about it. I, I wonder if the Pike is is a target ban away from David or not. But um, interesting to see that they didn't uh, opt to take away the Mordekaiser, that they didn't opt to first pick the Mordekaiser for the top lane. They went with the Mundo, mm. which, uh, while he does, you know, have the opportunity to to stay alive a bit longer. It's a really big option that they still left wide open into the hands of shanking there so yeah i'm, I'm pretty sure that they didn't take that mordekaiser off the table after yeah. it was just such a big problem and now the alawi will be an even more substantial problem in the top lane i mean <laughs> especially when you're dealing with percent health and this dr mundo they had a great response for the Dr. Mundo pick lined up and Lucianami getting locked in by Sentry and that will be really nice to see. I wonder if Sentry and Hong Ooh. will be able to pilot this duo to perfection. It is such a great aggress aggressive lane and they are actually doing what I had hoped in the, in, in the game previous. They are choosing things that are very W, choosing things that uh, can become very out of control if not checked. Yeah, I mean, above all else, Lions can give themselves the chance to springboard off these opportunities. And while they were looking to try and counter in the last game, this is a point in time where we need to truly figure out what their strengths are and capitalize on them. We've learned from the first game, now it's time to put it to the test. No the... Samira and no Galio. They're going to be another ban here to come out by the Black Hawks, the Hawks what Black. <laughs> going to be <laughs> Wukong to be denied. That name's dangerous, yo. <laughs> they know what they were doing. 
On the other side, though, I am pretty excited to see Nautilus come out of play here. I would love to see more um, well? aggressive rushes on the side of Blackhawks and um, actually get the chance to not only pull people into fights, but also get those initial picks to make their team fights even easier. Yeah, we saw they had great focus in game number one, and they've chosen picks one more time that allow them to flex that strength. Kaisa, a very mobile and deadly uh, AD carry, AP carry assassin. It's kind of this hybrid um, that can just pop anybody that they choose to. Does percent health damage, does just raw damage, all types of things that you have to be wary of when you're playing against this Kaisa. And now it's going to be on the Lions here to really choose some great stuff. And Olaf, a great jungler. Ooh. Nico, uh, another solid pick. That will probably be seen in the mid lane. And that will be a nice team fight focus composition. I guess the Olaf being allotted into focusing down whoever they want. Probably going to be the Syndra that this Olaf will be trying to destroy here if this is the pick by Ditto. There it is. And it will be. Bam. Syndra locked in. Alawi, Udir, Syndra, Kaisa, Nautilus. Once again, just an easier composition to pull off than what the Lions have drafted. But this might be that comfort that was hoped for. And it will be Dr. Mundo Jungle. I apologize. Coming out from real life. Dark Ocean going to be taking the Olaf to the top lane and trying to get those axes under towed down onto that Alawi. Mm. Now, what do you think the real condition is here for now now for lions as their build has changed up quite a bit to focus on actual potential are there real synergies here that allow them to win or is it really just going to be one cornerstone champ to really bring them home yeah this composition that they drafted this time is a lot more versatile than just okay we can nullify the engagement that's come down onto us they have ways to kind of weave in and out of the fight the lucian is very mobile as the game gets on he's able to reposition very frequently uh, Nami is a great character at both calling out awkward positionings that the enemy team is going on and also keeping them pushed away if they are kind of put into a dangerous situation. That tidal wave going to be doing such a great job at pushing uh, the enemy away and locking people down. So it's really just going to be more about them getting more gold than the Blackhawks or than the Hawks Black at this point because. If they start to fall behind in that and Syndra is able to uh, consistently harass people down, if Udyr is able to start to stun, choose to weave in, in and out of the fights and become the nuisance that he can be, and Nautilus and Kaisa are able to single people down with the lockdown that Nautilus provides, mm. that's going to become more of an issue for them than anything else. And if they have a lot of gold or they're able to just keep tempo and choose which fights that they want to pick for themselves they'll actually find great success here. Now, who's really the assassin on the side of Hawks right now? Is it Kaisa? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm, Kaisa's mm. going to be the... The issue is, like you're saying of assassins, there is no real assassin on the side of the Lions. Ah. Uh, Lucian is going to be able to provide that kind of consistent damage and make people go down a peg, but nobody that really just has a, a huge pop to them. Nico does have a little bit of a caster glass cannon to her, but nobody that's going to be able to do as much quick damage burst that the Kaisa is able to put out when she's killer instincts in and is able to just do whatever she wants to do after the Nautilus ultimate or Udyr stun, uh, even a Syndra uh, E that is able to tag anybody out will allow for her to jump onto uh, their radius and kind of maneuver in and out how she oh, wants. Oh, dang. So we're really looking at a really... Team fight focus, but also pick off focus build for Hawks. And on the side of Lions, what are we really looking at to even counter that? I mean, we have damage, we have at least a little bit of burst, but where's really the anchor to hold them down? That's why I think that they're going to need some gold yeah. here by the SM Plus, because <laughs> I'm thinking about it too, man. There's not a lot of things that they're able to bring. If this Lucian becomes huge, if this Olaf becomes huge, if Mundo is able to. I'm not sure what Mundo's going to really be able to do in this competition. He stays alive. That's a mm. great thing. But what is he really staying alive for? It's not going to be really able to put down the damage that he needs to onto Kaisa or Syndra. Udyr is going to be able to keep him tagged and slowed down a lot of the time. Nautilus as well. Um, 
And during that time of Mundo kind of not being an issue, they're going to be able to put that damage into Lucian and Nami and Nico, who are very squishy. Olaf will be the either the first one to die or the last one to die there if Olaf is not trying to engage onto the Hawks. And it's kind of like I'm at a loss of thinking how this this can win in in a team fight unless the wallets are really big by the Lions. It may be a battle of just true patience then. I mean, we see how the Hawks have built a team made for catching people off guard and pulling them into a fight they don't want to be, put, be a part of. But on the side of the Lions, maybe the real answer is just their style of play. Hawks yeah. have to try and reel you in. They, I'm not, I'm not sure about their diving power for this team, but the Lions might have the advantage in that sense. Yeah, the Lions, you know, then the possibly could dive better with that Mundo, you know, being the one to tank a lot of that that turret damage. And uh, it's just going to be on them having to be very proactive. Alawi is not the character that you want to dive. The tentacles are going to provide so much mm. uh, sustain. And she really is the kind of person that baits people into thinking we could take this Alawi down we're going to be able to go up there and, and take care of her and then all of a sudden she's full health and smacking tentacles down on everybody's <laughs> head and she got a double kill and now she's engaged and you can't even walk up to her in lane because she's just tearing you apart you know it's like maybe you go mid lane and really get to shut down this syndra but then you're just letting a nico get ahead which don't let me get me wrong a nico getting ahead is very great but uh it's not going to be like the end all be all. It's not going to be uh, like there's not going to be any answers that the Hawks Black can come up with if the Nico gets big. Mm. Oh, and here we are jumping into it. Game two just beginning off the bat now. The cinematic's pretty, but now it's time for gameplay. Oh, yeah. We love getting to theorize, but that is all speculation at the end of the day. The Hawks Black again with the an aggressive strat. invade. <laughs> yeah, they're going in, going in for the kill, doing it for the thrill. But this time the Lions... Wait, they're both doing it! <laughs> this time the Lions say, nah, we, we're ready. <laughs> but see how the Hawks Blacks are being proactive. They're getting vision. They're getting mm. deep. The Lions are playing defensively. They're just making sure that they don't get attacked. But I love this same, interaction. They didn't get that same vision, that same deep vision that was allotted for by the Hawks. So mm -hmm. all these tentacles as well, starting to get spawned up here for Alawi. She'll be able to come back to this to this blue buff, possibly win <laughs> Udyr gets here and make it very difficult. And you can see the Hawks oh, sorry, kind of backing it, off. The Mundo gets here. Going back towards their, their positions, going back to their lanes, nothing too crazy. Okay, did not want to miss this, and I'm so glad we're going to get back <laughs> into the action. It's still your boy, Osteo Champ. It's still the man, Suplex. And we're of course, back. it's we're play back. versus high school championship. 
We're with the grand finals here of the British Columbia School. Uh, I'm so sorry, the British Columbia School. School sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. School sports. Perfect. Yeah, and they're going to be duking things out here. Great game two. We stopped about a minute and a half into the mm. game, and we're going to be continuing on from that point. Uh, I cannot wait to see how things fold out, unfold here because uh, two very different compositions were chose, and now yeah. they're going to get to clash here. Starting at, like I said, I think like a minute and a half. Yeah, we did see a lot of really good plays so far in that first minute and a half before we got cut for a moment there. Sorry for, sorry for the technical difficulties, but we're back now. Getting back on the replay. It's all good. Don't y'all worry about it. This replay hopefully isn't going anywhere. Let's see the playback going back in there. There we go. Maybe get a refresh on the scoreboard there and we're good to go. But yeah, no, it, we saw a really, really confident play from the Lions. Also going for that 5v5 going right through the jungle to try and see if they can get that counter gank going on. Right. But until then, um, we saw just a little bit of building, and we're hoping to see a lot of really effective actual, like, assassin picks. And now, we don't have a real true assassin on the side of Lions. Yeah, the, the but Lions, trying to aim the for Lions that anyway. definitely lacking for damage here, and that's going to mm. become a, a big issue for them if they're not able to get a substantial lead and uh i do see chat they're asking if we see y'all we see y'all we love y'all yeah yeah uh, and we're gonna be getting into the game uh, i think that we just had to reposition everything real quick just want to make sure that everything goes as seamless as possible for y'all here uh, shout out to production just keeping things on their toes though even when a little bit of internet want to come and play games it's yeah. no challenge <laughs> we still out here with the good vibes and keeping things moving forward these high schoolers Bring in their best talents, and we're so excited to get to showcase those. Yeah, it's a big set, yo. The Hawks have been dominant, but the Lions are clapping back. We're about to see the remainder of this match, but don't go nowhere. This is still rocking, I'm telling you. Now, diving back into the actual matchup itself, the Lions were looking to at least hopefully get in there for that actual team fight play and allow them to really contest the amount of damage output that the Hawks have. Now, I want to see just what happens with the Hawks trying to answer back for that. But even more importantly is the movement from the Lions right now because the Hawks are looking to really get those pulls and just steal away players. Yeah, they just have a thing about them where they're able to choose very easy <laughs> compositions to pull off. And, yeah. and that might be big shout out to the coach. Uh, it might be big shout out to the, the players for just having – very easy to pull off uh, champions, but uh, big big dubs to chat. Uh, we also just, you know, are, are so excited to get to see if they're able to have such a succinct and concise game like they had in game yeah. one because, man, it was clinical. In those kind of clinical games, even though it might feel bad to be on the receiving end of, it's really beautiful to get to witness, you know, like – Five people just really firing off all on the same exact page. The communication exactly where it needs to be. The focus exactly where it needs to be. Uh, they left things lined up for themselves, and they played very disciplined as well. You were even able to shout it out. It's like, wow, they're choosing to disengage here when they probably could yeah. get away with something else. They probably could continue to press this little advantage that they have. They said, no, we're good with this. Let's go back. Let's buy. Let's heal up. Let's regroup. And let's uh, wait for another opening. Maybe your first idea isn't always your best idea. And mm. I think that the Hawks Black really showed that last game. Yeah, it's cool just how the Hawks are really showing off just how powerful they've been. And also how patient they can be as well. They wanted to get that five stack just going through jungle to get a free pick again. But they realized that the lines are smarter than that. They back off. It's all good. Show some respect to each team right it's not going to be that easy every time just walk through with the full team get a free pick and win <laughs> right you gotta sometimes get tested and i hope that's mm. where the lions are able to bring them to hawks black going to be able to put this into game set will this be matched though yeah we'll find out shortly we'll find out shortly we'll find out shortly we're looking to get back in the lobby right now production is trying to get back reconnected but um you know, until then, we're just trying to at least uh, hold strong and theorize just what's really going on here. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, yo, the Hawks look like they might take this in a 2-0, but I'm, we're looking for that game three. Yeah, no, it's 100% mm. doable. This is a big winnable mm. game uh, for the Lambrick Park Lions. They have a big uh, meal 
ahead of them that they have to stomach. But if they're able to do that, they're definitely poised for that game three situation where they've now got the momentum and they're going to be able to hopefully transition that into something even greater for them. They also chose picks that were kind of like a little bit of a flex too. So if they're able Mm. to win on these picks, it will really add a little bit of insult to injury. And uh, game three will be a whole nother situation that we sit in. Yeah. Now I'm getting... Just reading the word from Jordan uh, and uh, Dazza Production here. It's, we're hoping to get back in there. We did get forced DC'd, seed So we're hoping to at least maybe have a chance to get in the replay. But that might be it from our side. We're going to wait and be patient. Okay. See what's going on. Okay. But hoping to at least get a result. Or maybe half of a replay. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> we're hoping for the best here. It's a, unfortunate that we've got disconnected there. But. We will do our best to at least provide some kind of entertainment for y'all. Let me try and make sure this game two is um, at least completed and we at least have word for it. And now, the good news is if this does go to a game three, we'll have another match to watch and we're good to go. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad but news is this is a very long We game might not two. see as get to that <laughs> point, but yeah. uh, it would be a crazy <laughs> game to watch, though. Oh my gosh, I would love to see it if it happens, but... Uh, shout out to chat sticking with us. Maybe yeah. uh, I'm getting a little word here from Mr. Ed. The Hawks Black. Yeah. They've played together for three years now, except for Ditto. Ditto is the future. Three Ditto years. was on that Pantheon pick game one. And like we said, he had all the deaths on himself. And that's because he played his role perfectly. He went in, he singled out somebody. He made them easy to explode for the team. And even in doing so, might have taken a couple of hits himself. But none of them were L's. It was all, <laughs> it was all deaths with dubs. No, big W's out here, I'm telling you. But uh, no, once again, we are trying to reconnect to that lobby. We will hopefully have some answers or at least a nice update for y'all in just a moment. But for now, that's all the technical difficulties. Don't go nowhere. We appreciate your patience. We'll be right back with some more news. Don't go nowhere.
Welcome well, back, yo. Yes, that's it. Welcome back. Biggest congrats to the Hawks, Black. It's so unfortunate that we were unable to see the the, the team, the University Hill team, get to that victory. But, man, I bet they did it in a convincing mm. fashion. 2-0 on the table. And, you know, very thankful for their performance today. Shout out to the whole team. Shanking, Broken, Ditto, Kaju, and Not 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 David. They've been playing together three years. And this is just the them reaping the the success and sowing those rewards. That's some beautiful stuff. So I love to see it. Uh, Suplex, what you got to say, my man? Yeah, I mean, it's been a great day, man. Again, we couldn't apologize more for the loss of connection there, trying to get those games for y'all. But sadly, not this time. Riot has not allowed us to have a really easy connect spectator mode. So we've sadly lost the match. But until next time, we will have more League of Legends matches for you once again. This is the Play vs. Fall 2022 High School Championship featuring League of Legends with the BC School Sports Association. Once again, we couldn't thank the players, the coaches, the subs, the production, everyone here for putting a great bracket and really allowing these players to really just go ahead and shine. And if like, you want to stay time. tapped in with us, Suplex Plus on his socials, Oski Champ on yeah. mine. Uh, we'll be doing some commentating and some leaguing and loving all throughout the next couple of weeks as we bring you even more of the high school championship series. Y'all have a wonderful night. Stay safe. We'll see you next time. Take care, y'all.